The Deb Express Gauges Suite for WinForms provides unmatched capabilities in creating gauges of any complexity and type. From simple LED light gauges to complex objects with multiple scales and value indicators. In this video, I'll show you how to create this modern gauge seen in our WinForms Demo Center. I already have an application with a user control. It contains two track bars and a blank gauge control. Click the Gauges Smart tag and choose the Customize Gauge Control link. First, decide on which type of gauge you're looking for – circular, linear, digital, or state indicators. You can learn more about these gauges from the documentation on our website. For this video, I'll choose a circular gauge and click Add. You can add more gauges if needed, but I'll just add this one and click OK. Now let's start adding some visual elements. We'll start by taking a look at the Preset Manager. It's the quickest way to create gauges. Keep in mind that choosing a preset layout like this will destroy your current gauge layout and replace all gauges with the one selected. I really like the look and feel of the Ignis gauge, so I'll select it and click Load. Here in the Style Manager, I can set my background color as well as set the border style property. I'll choose No Borders. And let's run the app and take a look at our gauge. Now let's customize it a bit. Each gauge, whether built manually or from a preset, isn't one single object. It's a set of different visual elements that can be added, modified, or removed separately. For example, I can click the central flame icon to select the image component and delete it. Now I'll select the gray circle and modify its properties. The gray part of the circle is the scale a base object for any circular or linear gauge with specified minimum and maximum values. I'll adjust the start and end angles to make a closed circle. You can learn more about this by looking at the coordinate system topic on our website documentation. The orange part of my circle is the range bar, one of many elements that show current scale value indicators. In fact, in this preset, we don't see a scale at all. The gray bar is also part of the range bar and shows the available region from the current value to its maximum. I'll set the start and end offset properties to their required values to move the range bar a bit closer to the control's bounds. I'll also square up the edges by setting the rounded caps property to false. And that'll do it for our first scale, so let's add another. I could add a new scale and range bar by using the Gauges Smart Tag and adding another one, but if I do that, it would be created with its default settings. Then I'd have to go through all of my modifications again, which could take time. So instead, I'll clone the elements I already have and make adjustments to them. I switch to the Gauge Designer and select the Scales tab. Here's my only scale, so I'll click Clone to duplicate it. I'll just change its Radius X and Radius Y properties and make it smaller. Min value and max value allow me to change the default range. Now let's customize the start and end angle properties to go from full circle to an arc. Then switch to the range bar section and clone the existing range bar. I'll change the scale using the arc scale property and reduce its start offset point. Now, let's take a look at this at runtime. Next, let's add some functionality to the gauge so that it starts reflecting dynamic values as opposed to being static. But first, keep this in mind. Each value indicator has its own value property. You can specify this property to make the value indicator move. However, when I select any of my range bars, the value property is empty and still the range bar points to the certain value. This happens because value indicators are related to scales and scales have their own value properties. Most of the time, you don't need to set the indicator's value manually. Instead, set the scale's value and the value indicator will reflect it automatically. Setting the indicator's values explicitly is only recommended when you have multiple indicators related to the same scale. You're allowed to use data bindings to bind your scales to certain data. For this video, I'll use my track bars to pass their values to my scales on the Edit Value Changed event.
I'll run the app and try to drag my trackbar sliders. You'll see the range bars in the gauge reflect these changes. Next, it's time to add text blocks. I already have one that was created automatically when I loaded the Ignis preset. I'll customize its font and font size. Then change its size and place to the required position. This label will be used to display the inner scale's value, temperature. Like any other gauge element, I can clone my label in the very same way I did it with scales and range bars. The cloned label will display humidity and reflect the outer scale's value. The last element I'll add is the state image indicator. This element is different from the default image indicator that I removed before. State image indicators are able to dynamically switch between multiple vector images depending on some external factors. To set these images, I use the state images property and assign the image list object I already have. You can see that this list stores four grayscaled icons for different weather types. I set the state index property to zero to make my indicator display the very first state image and change the element's position a bit. In a real world app, I'd probably receive the weather type along with the temperature and humidity from my data source. But in this app, I'll use a sample method getWeatherType that returns different integer values depending on temperature and humidity. I'll call this method each time the trackbar sliders are moved, and depending on the return value, set the related state index property for my indicator. And you can see how it works at runtime. The gauges in our demo center also display value text for the temperature scales. Since these text blocks show nothing more, you don't have to manually create any custom label components. In this case, you can use tick marks, scale ticks that are placed along the scale. Each tick mark can display a tick, the short dashes, and a value text. Tick marks can be major and minor, each group with its own density and shape. I'll set the scale's major tick marks property to 3, so it will display a tick mark for a minimum value, maximum value, and 0. In the major tick mark section, I change the show tick property to false, so dashes won't be drawn and only value texts are visible. And let's take a look at what we have now at runtime. As you may have noticed, I never changed any element for colors for the elements I customized, and still some of them have this orange hue. This happens because the Ignis preset that I've loaded automatically applies a specific color scheme. A color scheme is a very handy way to colorize multiple elements at the same time. Locate the color scheme section and expand it. Here you can see two properties. The color property specifies the scheme's color, while the target elements property lists all types of elements that will be painted using this color. As you can see, you can colorize image indicators, range bars, and custom labels. Scale labels like those for our temperature scale are not affected. Let's change the scheme's color to crimson. If you want to override the color scheme for a desired element, go to its appearances and locate the content brush property. Color schemes are only applied to elements with empty brushes. So here, I'll paint my outer range bar with a solid dim gray brush. Just like state image indicators, schemes can be used to paint gauge elements differently depending on certain gauge states. For instance, I'll add a code that changes my color scheme's color to blue when the temperature drops below zero. I'll also add some code that dynamically updates my custom label's text. And now let's run the app one last time to take a look at the results. And that's how you add and adjust gauges in your WinForms application. Thanks for watching, and thank you for choosing DevExpress.